the world has very strange values. I was reading a while back, some investment bankers in New York think they're the smartest people in the world. And some hedge fund managers think the investment bankers are dumb, and they're the smartest people in the world. I must admit, the idea that they were the smartest people in the world never occurred to me. And I wasn't convinced when I heard it, the idea. But there's a lot of the world out there that believes that kind of stuff, that getting money is what it's all about, gaining power, gaining fame. And what we need is an opportunity to get out of our culture for a while. In the old days, they would have rites of passage. When a child finally becomes an adult, you'd wander out away from the village, spend some time out in the wilderness, to gain a sense of what your life was about, what was really important. And in our culture, we don't have that opportunity. Aside from the meditation, meditation does give you time to sit and be with yourself. Get all the voices of the world out of your ears so you can look at what's really important. You spend any time out in nature and you begin to realize that people can't be measured by money or fame or power or status. Your worth as a person doesn't depend on these things. It depends on the goodness you build into your own mind, into your own heart, into your own character. That's what the teaching of the perfections are about. The word perfection is probably a very bad translation. The word Pali word is bottomy. One of the meanings is Bada is something that carries you across, carries you across all the, the craziness of the world. Another is Bharam, which means foremost. In other words, these should be your priorities. Whatever work you take on in life, in dealing with your family, dealing with work outside the home, you want to look at it as an opportunity to develop good qualities of the mind and of the heart. Things like generosity and virtue, persistence, patience, discernment, goodwill, equanimity. Renunciation, truthfulness, determination. These are all qualities that the heart needs. And the things that stick with you in this life on into the next life. This is where you look for value. Your value as a person, of course, it's not something anyone else can measure. You measure it for yourself. It has a lot to do with how well you can live with yourself. You can gain money, but if you sell out your values to gain the money, it's not really worth the trade. And it's important that we hear this message again and again and again, because all the other contrary messages are being shouted at us. TV, radio, internet, internet. It's the quality of your character that really that really matters. And one of the reasons we meditate is to work on that, to have a center inside so that we're not so easily swayed by other people's opinions that would pull us away from what we know is right and honorable. You've got to learn how to focus your mind. Keep it focused on what you know will strengthen the mind. Because the underlying perfection or the underlying bottomy of all others is determination, realizing that you want to make something of your mind. 
and it's going to depend on you. So you make that determination and you stick with it. You make sure that your values are in line with what's right and discerning. And then you've got to be true to yourself. True to what you know is really right. Being willing to give up things that are going to stand in the way of what you know is right. And sometimes it means giving up fame in the eyes of others or the opinion that other people have of you. You can't let that sway you. You've got to keep your mind calm as you work to, towards what you know is right. And to do that requires a really focused mind. That's why it's so important that we learn how to master this technique here of just staying with the breath. Because once you've learned how to stay with the breath, then whatever you know is important in your life, you can stay with that and not let yourself get waylaid. So it's important that we keep on making the effort to come back, come back, come back to the breath. Keep reminding ourselves of why we're here, what we're doing. Don't forget and go wandering off someplace else. Because where else are you going to draw your strength? We draw our strength from listening to the Dharma. We draw our strength from the examples of other people. But ultimately, we have to find that strength within us. And the meditation helps to develop that strength. Because all the things we need in life to work on our character are there in the mind. Simply in some cases they're, they're weak or they're partial. They're not all around. But we have something to work with. Find that something and bring it to bear on the practice. It's through exercising the good qualities of the mind that they grow. It's like exercising your body. So the technique is not just a technique. It's meant to serve values that are really important, values that give nourishment to the heart, values you can hold on to as things change outside, as your body changes. As will inevitably happen when aging, illness, and death come, you're going to need something to hold on to. Well, this is how you build that. This is how you develop that, especially at that, that point where you're going to be leaving the body. Two things are going to be overwhelming, pain and distraction. Well, those are precisely the issues we're dealing with as we meditate. How do you let your mind not get scared off by the pain? How do you not let it get it led around by the nose, by distraction? You're gaining practical skill in that right here, right now, as you stick with the breath. So keep that in mind. This is not just an interesting exercise. It's a life and death matter, how you train your mind. Because at that point, that's what you're really going to need, is a well-trained mind, so you don't cause yourself suffering, you don't cause suffering for the people around you. So you can develop a refuge inside, i.e., the qualities of mind you can really depend on when you need them. So have a sense of how important this is. Because when you learn how to depend on your own mind, there's nothing you have to be afraid of. If you can't depend on your own mind, that's the biggest thing to fear. So to live a life without fear, this is what you've got to do.